Welcome to Techversity. This is Venkatesh Nataraj. Today I am going to talk about multi-factor authentication. Multi-factor authentication is adding an extra layer of security for the portals that we use in our day-to-day -day life. I am going to show how to configure this on Gmail. You can also add this on other portals like Facebook, Twitter or any other portals. Multi-factor authentication works on a technology called Seed. And this generates a unique code every 30 seconds to one minute. And that code we have to enter whenever we are trying to authenticate to that application. So with no delay, we will get into the topic. Before that, if you haven't subscribed to TechWords D, please do subscribe and share this video with your friends and family. Let's delve into MFA. So let's start with the multi-factor authentication, how exactly it functions. Before getting into the configuring with Gmail or a Google account, I'll show and I will talk about the actual process involved in the entire multi-factor authentication. There are multiple steps that involve here and there is no sequence. All these happen on a parallel activity to ensure the authentication is successful. To generate the OTPs, there is a technology called TOTPs. That means in general, the OTPs will have a 2 to 3 minutes. In some cases, even the OTP is valid for 10 15 minutes. But in this app, the OTPs will have a unique timestamp linked to each code due to the cryptographic systems that function in the backend. Now, that each code is only valid for 30 seconds. Since it is coming up with a unique timestamp in the backend, it will function only within that specified time interval that's 30 seconds to hardly 45 seconds later you will not be able to use that code further so the algorithm will make sure that it generates the otps that's the totps in the time based one time passwords with a additional time factor which will also have hmax based on it now what exactly hmax are hash messaging authenticator code so this will have a unique code integrated with that code with the actual TOTP and that will be stored on the cryptographic function that's running on the app so when like I mentioned about the seed while we are configuring the seed will ensure there is a unique code configured within the app and that will ensure for every TOTP generates the algorithm will make sure that will also have a HMAC that's how the algorithm functions and how exactly the security functions here is once the TOTP is valid and once it is valid or whether it's not valid it will ensure the timestamp when it is created when when it was generated there will be a pattern that will keep generating every 30 seconds so within that period it's the same OTP cannot be reused again and it cannot be stolen because that cannot be reused after certain time period after 30 seconds it cannot be reused the security protocols will ensure the entire OTP generation and the data and the C technology everything is purely encrypted within the app and no one can crack it or no one can stole it and the frequency cannot be matched and the pattern cannot be cracked the entire pattern system will be completely an encrypted system and it cannot be stolen at the same time this it's not just one app by seeing the code no one knows whether it is generating from which vendor and which authenticator app because there are multiple authenticator apps available in the market like google has their own google authenticator microsoft has the microsoft authenticator and other security companies have their own uh, authenticator apps there are even companies which has a physical generated uh, physical devices which will generate these codes manually and even this technology remains the same the C technology even remains the same even on the physical devices so it is impossible to know which code is generated from which manufacturer or from which app so this is how the MFA completely functions so now well, let's see how to configure this on the mobile phones I'm going to use a Google Authenticator for explanation and for configuration you may try to download either Microsoft Authenticator or a Google Authenticator or any other vendors applications that's available online. 
for apple users please download the authenticator app whichever you want from the app store and for android users please download it from play store now depends on the vendor the ui will slightly change but the entire configuration and the technology remains the same like i explained so let's get into the details i'll share my screen now on on the google front as well as on my phone to, to show how to configure this so let me show how to configure this on the google account so once you log into your google account you see your name on the top right side click on it and you will have an option to manage your google account click on this option and it will take you to the settings page in this page you will have multiple options on the left pane click on security as soon as you click on security you will have this page and scroll down little you see the two step verification click on it and once you click on that you have the options here now click on the authenticator app and it will ask you to set up authenticator now it will generate a qr code to ensure the authentication is successful now you have to scan this using your authenticator app on your phone now get into your phone and scan this this qr what is appearing on the screen with your phone and then it will start linking together so i'll show it on my phone now on my phone i don't have a google authenticator so i'm downloading from the play store so go to play store search for authenticator and i have selected the google authenticator and microsoft authenticator so i will select the google authenticator and i have already installed it so clicking on open now it is asking me to get started i will say i use the google authenticator without an account and click on add code the moment i click on add code it will say scan a qr code now that is the code that you have to scan now it will ask for the email and i will be scanning this with the qr that's appearing on the screen on my laptop now here it generates a random code and this code needs to be updated on the page that i'm showing the qr code so let's go to my computer now so here i have the code running and i have already scanned it so now click on next now i have to enter the code that is showing on my authenticator app 344343 and click on verify now it will validate whether the code is showing correctly and then it will validate it now this is successful so going forward if i have to now and say click on the turn on authenticator i mean turn on the second two step verification it will take my authenticator as by default now if i click on the turn on two step verification skip continue anyway now i am not giving the phone number and i am just giving the authenticator as my second step verification and it will whatever the code generated on my authenticator app will be shown here by default now click on done so that's how you have to configure your gmail with the authenticator app to enable the multi factor authentication okay.